Feedback control. It's the idea of taking a measurement of a system and adapting what the system does next based on the feedback. In engineering, people typically think of feedback control systems with respect to fairly standard automation tasks. It could be maintaining the altitude of a plane as it flies, even when there's turbulence. Or perhaps it's maintaining the temperature of a home or a building, even as the weather changes outside. Or maybe it is a robot trying to follow a desired motion as closely as possible over and over again in a factory. But what if feedback control could be used for something less standard in engineering practice? What if feedback control could be used to robotically draw or sketch from an image where the drawing quality can only be identified at the end of the robotic action? For all the systems described before, the airplane, the cooling system of the building, or the robotic arm, they all respond to feedback in a fairly straightforward way. They all try to match a desired, or reference, state or signal, such as an altitude, a temperature, or a motion. Given this reference, the controller tells the system how to create the output by comparing the feedback to the reference. This could be the building automatically increasing the power of the air conditioner when it is extra hot outside. However, this idea of reacting and adapting to the results of the system can do much more than simply maintain a desired state. For example, what if we changed what we are trying to match? Instead of a reference state or signal, it could be a distribution representing a higher level task. For example, an image to be drawn. In this case, we would change the way we define our controls and respond to the feedback to match the distribution or drawing. Yet, the same underlying principles of reacting and adapting the system to achieve the task based on the feedback still remains the same. Now, why would we want to use distribution-based feedback for higher level tasks? Well, for one, it also allows the robot to recognize that there is more than one way to solve a problem and take advantage of that. How? Well, imagine we want to draw a picture of a star. We could always force ourselves to move to the same starting position to draw the picture, but we don't necessarily need to do so to accomplish the task. The resulting image will still look the same. In the same way, by using distribution-based feedback control, whether we start from here or here, the robot will automatically solve the problem without needing to always start from the same point. In this case, Rather than simply regulating a state to a particular value, the way the controller reacts to the feedback captures a broader set of goals and can be used to accomplish a much larger set of automated tasks, like helping a patient relearn to walk in a physical therapy rehab setting, allowing self-driving cars to react and adapt to all kinds of driving conditions, or even drawing a picture of the Eiffel Tower. Feedback control has played a fundamental role in enabling automation in the 20th century, and it continues to do so by enabling a new rich class of goals to be fully realized.